Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today I am next to the distillery that we visited last week and that is the Glen Ord Maltings. Yeah, the Glen Ord Maltings provide malt to, of course, Glen Ord, but also distilleries like Talisker or sometimes Kleinliege and they will up and deliver to Brora as well. And yes, they are big malting with drum maltings and we will see that later. Um, they get their malt from, or not their malt, they actually get their grain from pretty much around here that they, they are located at the end of the Black Isle. The Black Isle is a very, yeah, very good ground for yeah, growing barley. They also get their malt from the lowlands. And back in the days, they also got the, yeah, their grain from yeah, out of state. So from, from Czech Republic or Germany or somewhere around there. And yeah, someone told me that uh, for two years now, they have not had any foreign malt coming, uh, foreign grain coming in. So currently they are running pretty much on Scottish grain and that's pretty awesome. So let's find out how grain is being turned into malt. So we are here at the steeping stage and we have these steeping tanks and there are quite a number of them. The steeping is to wake up the barley. You get a barley grain that is really, really dry and it's in a stage where it's so dry that it will not grow, that the plant knows it doesn't have enough water yet, so it will not grow and waiting for water. So when the steeping tank is uh, being filled up with water and the grain is added, then the grain soaks up the water and starts to germinate. But this is, uh, at this point, we're just giving the, the starting point. So when you fill it up, there are rings around it with air bubbling in. So the, the, the grain gets a bit of air in it as well. The temperatures are also very important, but the different grains react differently. Different grains want a higher temperature, lower temperature, longer times, shorter times. So it really depends. And this is the, yeah, the difficulty in making malt at the first stage, you want to have all the grains start at the same time. So what you do is you fill it up with water, let it soak, then take out the water, let it have a bit of air time, then you fill it up again. And it takes roughly about a day for the steeping stage. And when you have it done right, and you take out the sample of it, you see that all the, the, the grains of uh, barley they all have a little bit of uh, a plant sticking out at the front. And if that is really uniformly, then you've started all the grain to start to germinate. And that's exactly what you want to have. You want to have a uniform growth of all the malt. And after that, we need yeah, to give that uh, grain time to malt. And that's up to the drums. The next step is to fill two of the steeping tanks in one of these big drums. And in these big drums, the whole malt is spread out and turned twice a day for two uh, revolutions. And this uh, yeah, gives uh, the grain air and the humidity and air in there is controlled. So you have the perfect tem temperature and atmosphere for the, yeah, for the grain to germinate and turn into malt. And what you want is you want the, the perfect growth to have uh, a malt that it has a bit grown out and you want to have everything in a in a nice yeah creamy texture so when you spread it out and do the maltus rub then you want to have oh this one is not nil not yet done it because it has little bits in it but you want to have a uniform chalky texture so you could write on a chalkboard and you want to see that you have everything spread out evenly so this is what you want you want to have in the end because then you have the most sugar in there and it's best for yeah the fermentation um yeah some distilleries prefer a bit more malted a bit longer malted some prefer a bit shorter malted yeah but that really depends on what kind of character the distillery has because it's really um dependent on what kind of water you will produce what kind of uh, wash you will produce in the end is really dependent on these ingredients of the malt and that is uh, what you can set here 
in yeah the big drums yeah let's go to the next step and find out how the mold is then dried so behind me are the drying floors and they are actually really really hot in there and this is where the germination ends so you dry the mold until it has about five percent humidity in there and that totally stops germination and yeah that's the final product then and this takes around 24 hours so what the distillery does is they create hot air they get a supply of hot water from the distillery and with that hot water they can heat up the air to a certain degree and with that hot water they uh, hurt air they even heat it up a bit higher with uh, either gas fire for unpeated or peat and probably also a little bit of gas then and the drying has about has two stages first stage is uh, the free drying where you have um, yeah water on the outside it's it's really fairly easy to to dry it after a while it becomes in a region where it's hard to you know uh, dry it and it becomes uniform the, the forms a cake and breaks off and and then you have to force dry it and there you raise the temperature from 54 to 76 and then you really dry it to about five percent humidity and then the product is really done but the the maltings here produce two products peated and unpeated so they do about 25 uh, unpeated for every peated one and you can see what which kiln i'm standing in at this is the one that actually does the peating because the peating is the black one and they peat it at about 100 ppm 100 ppm is much far too much for every distillery that uh, gets supplied here with peated barley but you can afterwards do a blending so you take 100 ppm and you take unblended and then you blend enough uh, unblend uh, unpeated in there to get 30 ppm 15 ppm just as you want to have it and yeah after this is then done it's you can store it pretty much uh, a long time so, and times longer than you need for delivering it and using it at the distillery and what the what the maltings also do is they let it settle a little bit because that uh, lets the enzymes work in there a bit and the enzymes are really really important for the, the mashing stage and that's what you want to have so they they keep the malt here for a bit of time that the enzymes can spread out become evenly and after that it's just uh, batching with the different peat levels or unpeated levels into the, the lorries and then it's off to the distilleries yeah and that was it this is how you make malt and yeah the next stage would be the distillery so but i've already done a lot of distillery videos this was the last one on my tour yeah so thank you very much for watching if you found this video interesting then please feel free to share it with your friends who also enjoy single malt whiskey and thank you and see you next time